If you've ever looked in the mirror and noticed that your chest shape looks different, you might have a form of pectus. But do you know that there are actually three different types of pectus? Most people, including me, because I have pectus excavatum, only talk about pectus excavatum. It's also the most common. But there is pectus carinatum and there's pectus arcuatum. And, and they're actually very different. Um, and each have their own kind of approaches that we should take to fixing it um, with different surgeries or different exercise solutions. So I just wanted to talk about kind of how, how to think about approaching each case of pectus. Pectus refers to structural differences in the rib cage and sternum that will result in an unusual chest shape. So for pectus excavatum, it's where the chest goes in. That's what I have. For pectus carinatum, it's where the chest goes out and the sternum goes out. My dad actually has that and pectus itself is actually hereditary. So you might find someone in your family has some kind of pectus and you've got the other or you've both got excavatum or so on, but it often does run through the genes. So excavatum's in, carinatum's out, and arcuatum is both. <laughs> Prince Harry has pectus arcuatum. So now, how do you improve each one? So firstly, there's a surgical route for treating all cases of pectus, regardless of what you have. Okay, so for pectus excavatum, the most common surgery is the NUS procedure, in which they will insert like a titanium bar in your chest and then they flip it and it pushes your chest out. You have that in for a couple of years and then they remove it and it's changed the structure of your chest. It is an intensive surgery. It's not something you wanna take lightly. Consult with your doctor, consider all your options. Some cases of pectus excavatum due to it collapsing on your heart and lungs can affect heart and lung function and be a serious health concern. And that's when surgery is, is really recommended. A lot of cases, most cases are on the milder side and are often cosmetic. However, even if you have a mild case, it can be good to get it checked out. And surgery generally is recommended in, in cases that are more than cosmetic. But also mental health is a serious health concern. And if your pectus is extremely getting you down, you know, surgery is gonna be your best thing if you've got excavatum to make your chest flat. Okay, so it depends on the severity of your pectus, but there are other approaches which I'll get into later. When it comes to carinatum, there's also like a, a surgery that they can do where they can essentially like remove some of the cartilage and, and reshape the chest. I think this is a relatively intensive surgery and again, should not be taken lightly. Make sure you weigh up all your options and, and really do your research before engaging into something like that. I have met thousands of people with all different kind of pectus throughout my life, having coached people for the last decade with the condition to make it look better through exercise. And um, I've had countless stories where people regretted doing the surgery, but I've also heard countless stories where it's been amazing for them. So, you know, just make sure you, you, you do your research. And then pectus arcuatum, also there's surgical options. Obviously arcuatum being a blend of both, often it could be like a more extreme carinatum with a less extreme excavatum and, and, and that will totally vary in, in its shape. Um, and so, you know, it could be a quite a complicated surgery if you're trying to get surgery for us arcuatum due to the nature of blending both elements so make sure you get a good doctor a good surgeon but there is a surgical route for all three options now surgery i'm not a surgeon so you know it's not my form of expertise um, however exercise is i'm a personal trainer dedicated in improving the look of pectus deformities specifically excavatum because that's what i went through myself however i have coached a handful of people with carinatum to get a really positive outcome as well and so how exercise can help improve it, it's not reshaping the bones, but it's opening posture and building muscle, specifically targeting key areas. For example, with excavatum, it's the chest to build like sculpted pecs around the deformity, the abs over the rib flare associated with the condition as well. Um, but exercise can be really powerful, especially in mild to moderate cases. And you know, if you, if you think that's not true, just look at my client results, hear their testimonials, my own transformation. Like that's why I made this channel to help people utilize exercise because I think if you can, it's an amazing thing you should be doing. You should be working out anyway for overall health and well-being, and then you target it to pectus and you get a great result. When it comes to carinatum for building muscle, okay, similar principles actually apply. I know they're completely contrasting deformity with your chest going in, your chest going out, but obviously with carinatum, if you build your chest up, it's gonna make the actual protrusion of the bone less noticeable because you've built more chest muscle around it. So it's the same principle. And Honestly, half of what this is, is it's just building a good physique to distract from a bone deformity. When you're skinny and you're, you've got this obvious bone deformity, obviously that looks worse being skinny, okay, and being bony. When you have mass and muscle mass and an aesthetic physique, it distracts from it. And people don't just notice that, they notice your good body. 
So that's part of carinatum. So when people are like, does exercise help carinatum? Of course it does. Of course building your chest, like think about it logically. Of course building your chest is gonna help carinatum. But obviously you wanna build your overall physique as well. Don't just go and only train chest. And if you have rib flare associated with carinatum, then you definitely wanna be training your abs and your obliques as well, okay? And you should be training them anyway, strong core, you know, it's good for just general life and uh, function and body movement, stability, all kinds of things. And then with, with arcuatum, again, same principles apply. We wanna be developing the chest because it helps with the excavatum element and it will help with the carinatum. Typically with arcuatum, you're gonna find that you have uh, the carinatum up high and obviously the excavatum down lower. So with that, I would actually encourage more upper chest focus if you have arcuatum, okay? And same as carinatum. In comparison to excavatum, probably lower chest is slightly more of a priority. With carinatum and arcuatum, we hit, wanna hit the upper chest a little bit more of a priority, okay? Just due to the position of where that, that deformity is gonna typically be on your chest. Now, there are other options as well um, to improve the deformity. So there's the vacuum bell for excavatum, which is like a suction cup device that you put on your chest and, and over time it can actually reshape your chest. However, from my experience, I think it only really works if you're still growing. And I'm not a massive expert in the vacuum bell, so, but that is what some research suggests and some companies claim. And I have actually seen that firsthand in growing people who've used it diligently for multiple years. I have no idea how that can actually reshape your chest, but it does, like I've seen it but I do think you need to be growing for it to be a, a real notable change. And I don't think it's gonna make your chest completely flat. It might just give it some degree of lift. Okay, so that's the vacuum bell. Obviously that's not good for carinatum because your chest is already coming out, but there is bracing for rib flare and then there is bracing for the, the carinatum, the protrusion of the chest. Um, and so again, I think you need to be growing. From my experience, I've talked to a guy who owns a bracing company and he said that he only gives the braces to kids who are growing, otherwise it's not gonna make an impact. Um, so there you go, there's the synopsis on the three pectus deformities and some ways to improve them. So you've got surgical options, exercise options, and then non-surgical options like vacuum bell and braces if you're growing. Um, now, you know, pectus varies as well case by case. So you might have excavated but a mild case or an asymmetrical or a deep, or you have a mild carinatum or a severe carinatum. So the recommendations are gonna vary based on your case. So it is important you get like individualized and personalized advice. I do offer strategy calls to meet me so then I can make a strategy for you and then see if my, my coaching and my training and my exercise regimens will be a good fit for you. So if you are interested in that, that'll be the link in the description, fixpectus.com to book a call with me so I can meet you. Thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and make sure you subscribe for the next ones.